thing was shadowing us right behind us, right on the side of us. You could, you could kind of see the thing moving through the woods. Uh, all I can remember is flipping the light on, and I see this creature, and I knew, I knew in my heart, I knew in my mind, and the whole night, this isn't a man. And then this thing walks across the road, takes a turn towards us, and then leaps over a guardrail. Went to look forward, and there was a big black thing, is all I can Squatch D TV. Exploring the Bigfoot mystery each week with your hosts, veteran researcher, author, and TV personality, the Squatch Detective, Steve Culls, and from the Bigfoot Research Project of Kentucky, Chris Bennett. Sit back and buckle up as we bring you guests from around North America discussing the Bigfoot phenomena, but not without a few laughs, too. Here are your host, Steve and Chris. The whole time, the whole time. And, and good evening, evening cyberspace. cyberspace. Welcome to Squatch D TV for today's date, October 25th, 2020. I'm your host, your guide, the Squatch Detective Steve Coles, along with my co-host, the guy down there, Mr. Chris Bennett. What's up, Chris? Hey, uh, Steve, welcome, bud. It's cold in Kentucky, man. I mean, we, we've got the, the heat going now. It's kind of weird. The other day we had the air conditioner going. Now to flip it over to the heat because it's getting cold at night. Yeah, you guys yeah. got snow up there yet or what? No, no. Well, if I've said it once, I've said it before. Mother Nature is a schizophrenic. Yeah. She cannot make up her mind worth anything. <laughs> and uh, I don't, we may get some snow tonight on higher elevations, which could mean me. Uh, but I, I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, let's do the roll call and hello to Amy down there. Hi, Amy. <laughs> there she is. And oops, she's still muted. Hang on. I, I don't know how I missed that. Uh, so let's let's do our roll call. <laughs> uh, we got Ken. Hello, Ken. Ken. And we got uh, Tack. Mike, how you hello, doing? Man. That's a very austere picture he has there. Not quite sure if he's. Looking off into the distance, or he ate something that disagreed with him. He looks very dedicated, you know. <laughs> very. And hello to B. B's always there. Our Hi, buddy, B. Fr- our buddy Frank from across the pond. Hello, Frank. Frank, welcome, bud. Glad you could be here with us tonight. Terry, welcome, Terry. Hey, Terry. Good to see you. And uh, he's even saying it's starting to snow here in Nebraska. Oh, oh. wow! I knew somebody's going to get some. Yep. And there's Walt. Hello, Walt. Hey, Walt. Now, I hope that's Walt's dog and not Walt himself. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know Walt. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, B shows out there. Welcome, Amy. B. And uh, here we go. Ken. And John. John's in the house. Hello, John. Good to see hey, you John. this week. And we got Ken. Hello, Ken. Good to see you again this week. Ken. Linda. Hello, Linda. Good to see you. Hi, Linda. Looks like she's got a Yorkie there. Aww. And uh, Uh-oh. 
Uh oh, there's Mr. Uh, Bachochin Jay, in the we, house. We found hello, Jay, Jay again. He's here. And here, hello, Robin. Good to see Robin. you from Alberta. Welcome. And uh, long time, long time uh, buddy of mine. Uh, so very cool. And I think Nottam Yankee is in the house as well, but he hasn't said hello yet. But I, I can see people chatting amongst themselves. So yeah. what a show we have for you tonight. Of course, we get this great guest by the name of Amy down there that's going to be with us all night long. All night long. Yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> and, uh, well, where, where should we start? Um, uh, oh, and here's, there's Corey. Hello, Corey. Good to see you, my brother. Corey. And, uh, oh, here, uh-oh. Mick. <laughs> oh. There he is. There's Mr. Yeah. Mick. Yeah, you know, uh, Mick and snuggle up with the meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for, for people who follow the show or the new uh, for the new folks here, uh, Mick always has the ongoing commentary about his mother-in-law's meatloaf, or maybe yeah. it's his wife's meatloaf. I'm not quite. I don't it's know. His wife's. It's his wife's. I always talk about the mother-in-law. And really, you know, I, I've never had bad meatloaf. Have... You know, <laughs> I, I'm one of those people. If it's meatloaf, it's got to be good. You know. Kind of. I make good meatloaf. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, so this is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens uh, if I can find the open with button because my uh, my regular movie player decided to not work tonight. Hi, Sherry. So, uh oh, Sherry's <laughs> in the house. That's I trouble. see you over there. Yeah. But uh, this is what happens when you have really bad meatloaf. I think. I can't. Uh, there it is. That's what happens when you have really bad meatloaf. <laughs> oh no, that's terrible. <laughs> oh man, I wish it was a play. That's so good. Here we go. Here we go. Oh come on. <laughs> uh, uh, oh well. Oh well. Uh, I don't want to play that too many times because you know YouTube has this thing that will say, "Hey, where was the?" Uh, yeah. No. Uh, so, anyhow, uh, other the other interesting thing that that um, happened this week, and hopefully this will play with, uh, was uh, I did post uh, something, that, and the only reason why I posted this type of video because, in actuality, it was very close to where I I lived. Um, uh, in fact, it, it, it where I originally lived for a few years, um, it was like like. Two miles, if that. Yeah. Mile, uh, maybe tops, uh, from where I used to live. But now it's about you know twenty five miles. I but, saw uh, some of these the other day, but the yeah, ones you got I'm are better. Gonna, I'm just gonna <laughs> put it up silently, and um, this is the story of it. Um, uh, it it's kind of interesting. There's been a lot of talk about it, and I just I I, I find them fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, there's talk that these could be Chinese lanterns, but I, I got to say, they're moving pretty fast for Chinese lanterns. Wind speed was about seven miles an hour. Those things look like they're moving uh, pretty fast for the elevation. I know that area very well. So they're they're not moving seven no seven miles an hour. They're hauling. They're not moving 10 miles an hour. And, you know, I, I did put the weather data up on the post. So mm -hmm. uh, very interesting stuff as these folks have yeah. taken... They apparently saw like a dozen of them, and you can see them disappearing into the clouds. Uh, it was a rainy night. It was overcast. Um, uh, it had stopped raining probably about an hour and a half before these videos were taken, and it didn't rain until about an hour and a half until after. Well, here's the thing. Um, there's more than one. Uh, the actual audio in the video, you really don't hear... Yeah. Uh, any type of buzzing, but drones could be small. But here's the other issue: there is an airport nearby, but these do not look like. I don't see any red flashing lights, um, and I actually took a no. look at some some night video of different types of craft. Yeah. And in fact, there you have three of them. So that would be quite a bunch of uh, of. Um, That's why I was looking drones, for. I was yeah. looking for. I was looking for the red flashing light, and uh, I didn't see any. Oh. Um, it's interesting. Yeah, like it, it definitely is. Um, if they're Chinese lanterns, and see, I know a lot of people say Chinese lanterns, but they're not a big thing where we live. Plus, you know, um, uh, 
the um the uh they're illegal <laughs> they're illegal in new york chinese lanterns um and you look in an area like this where you know across the river there is another city uh the city yeah. of troy is across the river where they're going towards um yeah. that can cause a lot of fires but nobody cl nobody ever claimed hey these things came down or um, you know, you, you got to understand the capital district. The whole thing is, is like one city on top of another city after another town after another village after another. So right. the, the actual, the, the area where these have been being taken on, there is, you know, square footage and mile. It's all, it's all, it's all towns and, in, 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 um, cities. So nobody ever said, Hey, we found this. Um, so very, very interesting stuff. Um, Tries a couple of really uh, bad attempts at zooming in, and there's yet another one. And like I say, the speed of that, it's hauling pretty good. So Yeah. Um, you know, I like that one really yeah. tells me right. it's moving fast. Yeah, you can uh, see. Right. In the area. Mm -hmm. That's moving way fast. Yeah, that's weird. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and drones being flown by. I, and uh, Aaron asks, is that water valite? Absolutely it is. Now here's the other interesting there uh, thing, is that and hello Aaron, welcome to the show. The other interesting thing too is that there is actually uh, probably well I'm guesstimating it, it's actually could be flying over the Waterville Arsenal. It's actually a federal arsenal where they man manufacture um, you know um, guns uh, for you know for years you would see them they, they they would make guns for tanks they would make guns for they still make guns for tanks and warships and stuff like that so they're an, an arsenal an arsenal is where they make armaments uh, a, a, a armory is where they keep them so just so people know the difference so um, yeah and this is just a negative view of the same thing um, those two look like they're parallel like moving yeah well yeah, one's going so somebody had mentioned maybe the starlink satellites but the problem was they're overcast you wouldn't see them yeah so definitely overcast that night um you know really cool they look round but yeah. you know just that's just the light though yeah. so but you also get a good indication how fast they're moving right you know and like i said with a wind speed of seven miles an hour that ain't no seven miles an hour uh, now, yeah, that 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 that's a that's airplane speed right there. I, I think. Um, yeah. Well, that, that's the other concerning thing, and I'm going to click off on this. That's the other concerning thing about mm. that is, is that they're not doing anything. Right. Um, that's that's crazy. Uh, you know, yeah. they're not zipping by like. Right. Right. And and. Um, we uh, can just say that it is interesting. It's very interesting. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's not like that they zipped up. A thousand miles an hour yeah. straight up, you know. I'm yeah, I mean, to me, I think there is an earthly explanation to it. So, and I don't know why I'm, I'm getting every time I'm talking, I'm getting this. Yeah, I hear that. It's not like somebody's eating uh, walnuts. <laughs> Hang on a second. It's a mouse. It's a mouse in the computer. <laughs> Well, the funny thing is, it's definitely coming from my mic. Yep. So let me try something. We have else. another gremlin. Yay. Uh, <laughs> this is wonderful. It, sorry, folks. It seems to be an ongoing issue. We have a, There's going to be some sort of technical problem every now and then. So well, it's now okay. I'm getting it on your end, too. Huh. Check one, two. Check, check, check. Maybe Actually, I think it's on your end. Ah, oh, my God. Hello? Yeah, yeah. It's a little... Is a dog eating? <laughs> I don't know. Let me, let me go out and come back in, and we'll see what happens. Be right back. All right. So, uh, so yeah, so the... Uh, oh, and, and thank you, BB... Uh, B, uh, put up there, please give a thumbs up and like the channel. Very appreciate it. Thank you, B. <laughs> the unofficial spokesman of the TV show. We gladly appreciate this. And we're, we're waiting for Chris to come back in. I do not know what... And it does appear that clicking noise has gone away. So... Uh, 
No, OT, we, we have a clicking noise, and we're trying to discover where this may be. It does sound like it's someone is typing, but nobody is. So that's the interesting thing. I can... Huh. Seems like it's doing it again. I don't know what is going on with the sound. And it's not my mic. Just making sure everything is connected. It is. Do you think this video of fast-moving lights could be real UFO craft and not of this world? Uh, my answer to that is, I think it has a, um, a, um, hang on a second, I'm going to try one thing here. No, the, nobody's clicking a mouse here, um, so nobody's hearing it there. Uh, I'm going to just back my mic off just a little bit. Yeah, we've had some gremlins with the show. <laughs> hey, Chris. All right. Can you hear me now? We can hear you, but the clicking is getting really bad again. Is it me? No, it's not. Oh. I don't know what it is. <laughs> wow, that's weird. It only happens when we talk. <laughs> so, uh, I hang on a second. It's definitely not the mics. Uh, let me just try something here. Listen to that. It's going by itself. Is it that other program you had running that wasn't working? No, no, no. Nothing's working. Nothing's running in the background. And it just seems like the more we talk, boy, that is annoying as anything. Mm. Um, you know, it, it, it sounds like every time we talk, somebody goes, like they're typing on a keyboard. Okay. But you, you're hearing that, right? Yeah, I can hear it. Okay. Because... Uh, Corey oh, just said, yep, don't hear it now, but I don't know if he meant, yep, hear it now. It's Jay eating pistachios. <laughs> yeah, if he was on. But, um, wow, that's weird. I'm going to... Uh... I don't think it's as bad as you think, at least not for me. Like, oh, it, it, is, it is for me because it's right in my ear. Yeah, for like, you it's right I'm, As I'm talking, ear. I'm hearing like somebody's <laughs> typing behind me. Right, for you it's right um, in At least it's not in your ear. Right. It's in your ear. But I'm bump. <laughs> uh, hang on a second. Hang on. Fast typer. Sure yeah. am. <laughs> John says it's the meatloaf. <laughs> yes, it could be the meatloaf. So, Mick, so let, let, let's get let's get into the show. Um, yeah, yep, yep. yep. Uh, uh, so, Amy, you know, introduce yourself. Tell us, you know, how you got into this, what you've been doing, all this fun stuff. All right. Well, my name's Amy, Amy Boo, and I'm from Ohio. I live in Youngstown currently, and I have always. Um, had an interest as far as like kind of weird stuff like when I was a kid I I um, used to watch Unsolved Mysteries and you know things like that but it wasn't an obsession or anything like that so I just want to say that first of all because it's not like I had never heard of Bigfoot before um, but it was not something I thought about much at all and not something I ever thought I'd be looking into to the extent that I do now. But in um, 2012, I saw something from about a hundred yards. So I can't be sure what it was, but to me, it looked like what I would think Bigfoot looks like, you know? So it looked enough like Bigfoot um, to get me startled and to start me looking into the topic. And, um, since then, you know, that's eight years ago. Um, I, I'm still not obsessed unless my family might say differently. I have to cough. Hold on. <coughs> Sorry. Of course I have to cough. Um, okay. But I probably spend more time with Bigfoot things than almost anything else 
in my life, you know, looking into things, um, going to events, doing podcasts like we're not doing tonight. And um, it's really become a fascination for me, I guess I would say. It's something that I feel super passionate about. Um, and I've been doing a lot of things. You asked like what I've been doing and stuff, but, um, I have, man, where do I start? The thing that I, at the beginning, at the beginning, <laughs> at the beginning. well, I did, I told you my lame sighting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was born in a cotton field. Out in the... Yeah. Well, people are always, you know, telling me about the really super exciting sightings and I don't have something really like that I saw this thing from a distance um mm -hmm. I did have you know people always ask if I've had something else happen in 2018 I was at an expedition where I saw something very large um quickly walking away from me and another witness through a FLIR so it was at night kind of misty out we did a recreation to try to figure out how big this thing was but again, um, I'm a skeptical type person right. and right. I don't know for sure what it was, but it was really cool, you know, um, seeing something where it wasn't supposed to be. And if our calculations were correct, uh, we had a friend with us named, we call him Big Kevin because he's six foot nine. And mm, this that's pretty big. Yes. So this <laughs> whatever it was, this thing was walking and we put him right where we had seen it. And he was a lot smaller than this thing. Yeah. But that's if our calculations were correct. And if we put it exactly him right exactly on the same spot. And if our emotions weren't in the way, you know, so I, I did have that experience. And it was really exciting at the time. It was the only time in my life I ever had my knees buckle. Because <laughs> I was like so startled yeah. by it. But um you know, I've never had really a smoking gun moment. I've spoken to a lot of other people who say that they have, right. but when pressed about whether or not I believe Bigfoot is real, I always say that I think that they are real, but I, I'm the type of person I need to have a better experience than I've had to be a hundred percent. Right. So, um, and that, that's good. And that's honest. And yeah, I like that, you know, uh, you've seen something, but you're not certain, you know, it, it wasn't, right. it wasn't like it popped up right in front of you. Right. And, <laughs> and, you know. Yeah. That, yeah. That's honest. And I, I like that. Yeah. And it depends on the day, you know, I'll, I'll talk to some witnesses. One of the things I like to do nowadays is my research partner, Tina Sands and I have been doing some outdoor shows like hunting and fishing shows in Ohio and Pennsylvania. And we get a lot of people that will come up to us and tell us their sighting stories. And, you know, I, I know that a lot of things are either hoaxed or misidentifications, but a few of them stick out to me that I really believed these people, what they were saying. And if what they're saying is true, then Bigfoot is real, you know? So some days I wake up and I'm like, oh, I am positive. <laughs> <laughs> These pictures are real. And then others, the other days I wake up and I'm like, man, am I wasting my time chasing something? But I guess I always come back to the same thing that if I'm wasting my time or I don't think I'm wasting my time is what I meant to say, because especially with the project that I'm involved in, I might never see a Bigfoot ever you know, live the rest of my life, go out searching, looking, and I might never see anything, but I still feel it's a worthy pursuit because perhaps I'll find something else. You know, I'm a Ohio certified volunteer naturalist now, and I'm like, maybe I'll find a new fungus or I'll, maybe I'll find a new weed, <laughs> you know, or something. <laughs> weed. Um, Uh-oh. Not yeah. that kind of weed. Wait, wait, wait. This <laughs> isn't the 40 and slip. <laughs> But, you know, so maybe it just, just enjoying being outside and, you know, being out in nature, that can't be a waste of time in my book. So, right. you know. You know, and I, truthfully, I, I felt the same way. And, and the amazing thing is I've actually had uh, a couple of really good sightings. Mm -hmm. But because of some of the stuff that goes on, um, 
you know, I, I, I just, I'm sorry. I keep hearing that clicking on when I talk. So I don't know if it's coming from, it's coming from something here on this end or maybe Chris's end. I'm not quite sure, but, um, <clears throat> what I, what I found was that, uh, even now, uh, with all the hoaxes that come through and, and the misidents and, and, and some of the talk, I turn around and go, Oh, you know, I, I'm beginning to doubt what I saw after yeah. a while. And, and, and I had like a 40 second sighting with one. And then I saw, I mean, with my own naked eyes, not even right. through a fleer. <clears throat> um, and, and I still have reservations. Um, that's just self honesty. Yeah. You know, um, you know, and then people say, well, you know, that's, you know, that's why you don't believe, Steve, or that's why you're so uh, critical of other people. I'm really not. I let people talk. I let them tell their stories. I believe them. I believe they. So it's like I expect the same of them of me yeah. uh, unless there's something really that sticks out that's unusual, um, <clears throat> you know, like taking pictures of a Bigfoot peeping into your window. And then after your right. wife sees it eight minutes later and then, oh, I'm going to put the camera down and grab the gun. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you know, you know, the, the silliness of that, that story. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I've heard some, uh, what was, uh, aside from your sighting uh, through the FLIR, which I've had a FLIR sighting too in 2013. And, and <clears throat> you know, for a lot of, a lot of years, people saying, oh, the FLIR is going to be the go-to technology. And I kept saying, ah, I don't know, um, because you really can't get much definition through a FLIR. But it's mm -hmm. a great tool to say, Okay, that's a that's something on four legs. Oh, it's a bear. Um, right. and when I went to uh, the Pennsylvania uh, Bigfoot camping adventure in 2016, uh, I know we met up in 2019. Right. Uh, but in 2016, uh, I got, or was it 20, 2017? I apologize. Um, I was running my uh, my Seek Thermal through my phone, and of course, you, you got a small screen, so you're like, "What is that?" What? what? So we get it up on a big screen, and realize it was a bear. Um, you know, that, that had been up, I, but we kind of figured it was something on, on four legs eventually because it, it stood up to watch us. And that's wh where we really got a, you know, you see this little, you know, this flare coming up behind some shrubs and all of a sudden it bloop, stands up tall and we're like, okay, what, what's that? And then we couldn't really see it kind of because of the way it moved and it, so you're like, okay, we're going to, you know, we may have something. I don't, I don't know. We get it back. There's all excitement. I look at it and go. And I, it looks like a bear, you know. Yeah, it's always disappointing when you can debunk it, but it's important to do. You know, we, and, we did the best we could uh, under the circumstances with the FLIR sighting because um, it was myself and another gentleman who was only there for his wife's sake. He was not into Bigfoot at all. <laughs> and both of us saw this. We, we gave the FLIR back and forth to each other and watched this thing walk away from us. Definitely was on two legs. And what stood out to both of us was the um, width of it at the top. So I'm now not... you have a glow in the dark blob <laughs> spot. <laughs> so um, what, what was done very well, I think was that one of the guys that was in charge of the expedition, David Wickham, who's a researcher in Ohio, he separated myself and this other gentleman and we didn't talk to each other for, I think it was three weeks, two or three weeks. We were separated. We each wrote down what we saw. We drew a picture of what we saw. They, um, like, if you want to call it cross-examined us, you know, like different people got our stories. And when we finally got back together, like everything matched up with each other. The, the drawings were similar, what we said we saw and heard and smelled and all of that kind of thing were very similar. So, that was uh, done well, but still you're left with two people who say they saw something and we're not sure what it was, you know, so definitely not a smoking gun, but it was something I'll never forget. That's for sure. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I, I'm just going to ask this over there, Mike, um, Tack, uh, can I show that video with a bear you guys got? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, obviously put play any sound on that, but. If uh, <laughs> if you just want to type in, yeah, go ahead. I'll I'll put it up for folks, because you know you know Tag makes a great great point saying that a, a bear standing up uh, looks human on thermal oh, yeah. sometimes, and uh, so Tag, if you're still listening, just just uh, either text me or 
Uh, yes, no sound. Okay, beautiful. So we're not, we're not going to run any sound on this because we have the sound turned off. But uh, here is a really, really, uh, with a much better definition uh, um, video. Um, you'll, you'll, I'm pretty sure this is the... No, never mind. <laughs> I know I didn't save it. That that is uh, actually I'm. Uh, <laughs> I I thought that was because I I looked on my my uh, screen real fast, and uh, actually w when I'm playing is a testing of uh, my thermal, okay. or not my thermal, but rather my night vision. <laughs> so. Well, what was cool about what we watched was it walked down a power line cut away from us for. I would, I'm not good at distances, oh. but I'd say at least a hundred yards. And it was definitely walking on two legs. And then at, when it got down to the end of this cut, there's a drop off, a pretty steep drop off. And then a little, I don't know if you call it a river or a stream down there. And then you can go up the power line cut the other way. But this thing just like walked over it. Like it didn't. It, as a human, especially at night, you'd have to like get down on your hands and knees and kind of hold on to branches and things to try to get over there. And this thing was just gone over that. Here's my cat <laughs> over yeah. that um, embankment. So it was really weird that just that part of it. So I don't think it was a bear. What it what it was, if it was a very large person that knew their way, you know, like yeah. that in the dark. I don't know. It was also a, in an area where there have been several sightings and footprints taken and audio. So you put all that together as a story, it at least becomes intriguing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, now, Amy, I caught part of your, um, when you're a guest for the, uh, oh, on yeah. the, the mm -hmm. She Squatches show. And uh, I, I caught part of it, but I, I, one of the parts I caught, you were, you said something about you had done some research or, or looked around in Kentucky. So I was wondering, what, what part of Kentucky did you go well, to? Well, I do remember, do you remember, I've been down to, um, like, Daniel Boone National Park. Um, one of my favorite places to, yeah. to go is Yahoo Falls down there. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's beautiful. It looks like you're in Jurassic Park yeah. almost from the kudzu down there. Um, yeah. The place that I've been specifically on some expeditions, I would love to tell you, but I promised a friend that I... Oh, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's, that's fine. I would yeah. tell you if it was me, but you know, since he keeps that kind of quiet, I I don't really want to say. But um, but it's been Kentucky's a cool place to research for sure. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So one of the other things Steve was asking, what else I've been up to? Um, one of the other things, you know, flash forward, like I said, from 2012 till now. Right. And you find, I find myself um, the head of a group that I'm really proud to be a part of and excited about called Project Zoo Book, which is really yeah. why I do shows like this. And, you know, I never, I never considered, um, you know, never set out to be a speaker or somebody that anybody would want to really take notice of in the Bigfooting world. But because of Project Zoobook, I've kind of put myself out there a bit. And um, yeah. it's pretty fun, exciting project that we have going on. Right. And I caught part of that. And correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't you guys working uh, with the uh, Olympic project? Yes. Yes. I'm a member of the Olympic project as well, which I'm really honored and excited to be a part of. Um, and yeah, we work pretty closely together because we have some crossover of our members, you know, some yeah. of us are in both and, uh, you know, Shane Corson is a really super good friend of mine. He uh, obviously is in the Olympic project, but he also is an integral part of project zoo book. Yeah. And we're just and excited for, about it. For our listeners out there that don't really know, uh, about, you know, what the Olympic project is. Can you give us a little background of how that got started? Um, sure. You know, fill them in. <laughs> yeah, I, I say this every time I do an interview, but to me, the Olympic Project is the most exciting Bigfoot research going on out there. Again, to me, I know other yeah. people are posing differently. Right, right. But, but basically, there was a gentleman who was a um, surveyor for a logging company out in Washington State. Um, in the Olympic National Forest, and he found what 
are um, can only be, you know, can only be described as ground nests. Yeah, yeah. They're really big. They're huge uh, nests that at first he found a few of them and um, he told his boss about them because you know that logging companies can get in trouble if they disturb any kind of endangered species or anything like that. Right. And basically, they called a whole bunch of people and they called a bear specialist, a wood yeah. rat specialist, some government agency people in and nobody could figure them out. So eventually he got hooked up with Derek Randalls, who's yeah. one of the heads of the Olympic project. And they were given some time and access to this area to look into what could be making these nests yeah. and um you know that was a few years ago they have found over 20 nests in the first area and they're all in different stages of degrading so you had some that were a lot um more recently made than others right. and this year early this year they found a whole nother nesting site which was very exciting because you know the uh as far as what I understand is the logging company was going to clear cut that first area, which is why the surveyor was out there. So you, your time kind of starts to run out of it. Right. So they've been looking for, you know, other areas and they did find another one and are now kind of focusing um, a lot of their time and energy on both of them, but this new one specifically. Right. So and some of them, what I, what I liked about that too is because we have the, uh, some of the nests are fresh and some of them are kind of have been there a while it gets you you know you you put two and two together and say well something has got to be making these things recently you know <laughs> right right and and that was one of the first conversations we ever had with um our core group in project zoo book was about those nests right. Shane came on and we were talking about them and talking about how similar the behavior would be to like a large primate like an orangutan who only has young every so many years and you know maybe this is right. a site or something like that you know we don't know and the olympic project doesn't say that bigfoot is making these nests because nobody's seen that but right. it's definitely some kind of unknown animal behavior and again you put the story together with prints you know the this newer um right. discovery they had hand print footprints uh vocalizations and it all is really exciting. Yeah, yeah. And uh, now Zoo Book, that's, yeah. that's your organization, right? Yeah, Jer Jeremy made a great point too. Like, like when you had your sighting, you were talking or, or stuff like that. What, what's more li likely, a hobo wearing a ghillie suit chasing squirrels or a big foot? Well, more the likely? hobo wearing a ghillie suit, yeah. man, I don't know about the squirrels, maybe, maybe raccoons. I don't know <laughs> <laughs> about the squirrel population. Oh. No, but, but that's actually a good point, you know, I'm, I always say I've always been a fan of Sherlock Holmes and he always said that you look at everything it's not and you're left with what it what the truth is. So could it be a really big hobo with a ghillie suit? It could be, right. you know, I don't know. So that's why I say, you know, it was an interesting experience. It was exciting. It was a bit scary, but I don't know if I saw Bigfoot that night. Yeah. Well, here's an, here's a great video Mike uh Mike and his team uh took this last week out in western new york uh but this is a bear and you can see how it could be very easily construed into something you know looking or peeking around a tree yeah and uh cool. it, it does go for a few minutes but you can see you know wow that's really tall you know so that's why you gotta be really careful with these things yeah. um because you really just don't know and eventually you just get plops up into the tree yeah that's yeah. neat yeah. yeah and you know what and if you and if if you figure out it's a bear is there a moment of being disappointed it's not bigfoot sure but you got to see a bear that's oh cool. yeah you know, know? I, cool. I, I, I love that video you know it's the yeah. same thing when, with, when you deploy trail cams um you know when people say you know oh bigfoot avoids those that's why you haven't got anything on trail cams i don't know a lot of times i deploy trail cams i don't get a blessed thing um, unless you know that there was one one I, I i gave it to my hunter friend and of course <laughs> there, there's like 248 pictures of deer eating various things 
and here and probably about a, a dozen or so pictures of a bear that was wandering yeah. through over the night. But that's cool. And they they pick up they pick up the scent of, mm-hmm. of whatever it is, and of course yeah. they brushed up against a camera. Uh, I have one trail camera that's got a scratch on it, and that was from the bear. Um, but uh, there's a lot of interesting uh, comments and stuff. I want to get to some of the uh, questions. Uh, Tack, of course, uh, says, does Amy plan on researching in New York? Uh, and you're really interested in Amy's new project. I so. love New York State. The Adirondacks is one of my favorite places I've mm-hmm. ever been. So, yeah, I would love it. When I well, go up to a Kinzu Bridge and that part of Bradford County, PA, I usually swing through New York and go down. But, um, no, yeah, take me to New York. I'd love it. Yep. And if you're ever on the east side of New York, you know, we'll give you the Whitehall tour. Yeah, that would be we'll great. Go out and play out there. Um, uh, uh, going back to our questions here, because things still keep plopping. I'm trying to keep track of this. Um, Ken asks, uh, Amy, in the past, how has uh, past projects drawn you closer ever to further in your research? So, uh, I mean, have past projects actually gotten you closer to your answers that you're looking for or you're still searching? Well, I think, you know, everything kind of builds on each other. But, yeah, I'm definitely still searching. I've had, I think you mentioned earlier where you've had some things that you really thought were intriguing and then found out that they weren't what you thought. (laughs) And that's definitely happened with me. Um, But I think every, every, even that, you know, it's made me be more cautious Um, as a human being. It makes me a little bit sad that I'm not as trusting as I used to be, but as a researcher, that's a good thing, you know? So um I think so. I think so. You know, every, every time I go out and I talk to a different witness, um, I, I feel, you know, I'm, I'm a teacher. I'm unemployed right now because of COVID, but I'm a teacher and I feel like my um, lie detector is pretty good (laughs) when it comes to kids, you know, the dog ate their homework, all that kind of stuff. But um, I always try to give witnesses the benefit of the doubt, no matter how far out their story is at least while I'm face to face with them, you know, try to get that um, story out and everything. Cause there could be some truth in there. Um, I forget where my train of thought just went, but I feel like, you know, even, even if I find out that somebody was lying to me or whatever, it helps me in the future to be aware of certain things. Mm -hmm. And I feel, and I'm not sure if he meant to like, different organizations I've been a part of or different, um, you know, things I've tried. You know, I used to be a a researcher for the BFRO and then kind of went out on my own, was picked up pretty quickly after that by the Olympic Project, which was kind of an offer I couldn't refuse, (laughs) but um, personally anyway. But, um, you know, I, I appreciate all the opportunities I've had for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's better to go ahead and hear everybody out. If you got a witness yeah. and you want to hear inter- interview them, listen to their story, and that's fine. And then, you know, if they start telling you about then the Bigfoot stepped out of the UFO, you know, okay, that's that's it. I'm really kind yeah, I've got to go. I'm but, definitely, I'm a primate girl, right? I am. I think that, mm-hmm. I think that if Bigfoot is real, that they could definitely be an undiscovered primate. Do I know that? No, I don't know that. So I have a lot of friends who might think that Bigfoot is an alien or something more paranormal. And I don't really have such a problem with that. Is it what I think? No. Is it my focus? No. But I feel like to me, a lot of times paranormal things could just be things we haven't figured out how they work yet. Yeah. You know, and they could just be the way people are describing them could be off, but I don't. Yeah. Have, I don't have a problem with any of that. I, I, I mean, if we would really find out that Bigfoot came from a flying saucer, that would be pretty amazing. <laughs> it would. Yeah. Yes. I I just don't think that that's well, the case. But I don't well, know. Yeah. I don't know. Well, here's the, here's the interesting thing I I've always said about that is 
you know, say somebody says a, a, a Sasquatch walks off a UFO, and it's funny, I, I actually had a lengthy conversation with a UFO researcher this week because we were talking about the water belief. Yeah. yeah. And so we, we started talking about that a little bit. And, and I know Stan Gordon, you know, likes linking these types of things up. Yeah. And I've listened intently to everything that's said. And, and that's the, that's the thing. Yeah, anybody that has a sighting. Yeah. I mean, people have said, Oh yeah, I've seen Bigfoot blink out. I've seen him do whatever. I listen to them. I don't put them down. I, I take it in. Okay. I don't argue with them because it's their experience. Right. But I also give them that alternative thing. And there's a lot of different scientific, uh, in some cases, or lot, not even scientific, but logical uh, things. Some are scientific. Some are just yeah. logic. Some of the scientific things I always like using is... You know, the deer jumping into the woods, you know, you look, drive by it, you can't see it, it's gone. You know, right. it right. didn't, it didn't cloak, it didn't, you right. know, go it into just, a portal, it, yeah. you just can't see it. The, the, as far as the Bigfoot in the UFO, I always say to this that, you know, there's reports of alien abductions and all kinds of stuff. There was the, you know, you have Betty and Barney Hill and the UFO thing, which, really was an, a, 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 an amazing event. It was in the early 60s, mm -hmm. and it involved a, an interracial couple, which back then was like, you know. They really put wow. themselves out there, yeah. Yeah. Um, Travis Walton, uh, who, you know, had four friends that were witnessed, yeah. uh, you know, seeing this event, and they all passed lie detector tests. Yeah, they did. And they were under a lot of criminal investigation at the time. Oh, the book right up here. Yep. <laughs> Um, so if anybody has not seen Fire in the Sky, it's a great, great movie uh, about the Travis Walton uh, story. Um, my, my point being is, is that if a Bigfoot's coming off a UFO, why wouldn't they think they're researching them as well as us? Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, what about the cows, the cattle mutilations and all that stuff that went on in the, in the right. 70s and 80s? Exactly. You know, the no, US, I yeah. agree. Yeah, I agree. So, I don't. I don't understand why people necessarily have to make the jump there. Like, right. Right. I, I, I find some paranormal things kind of interesting. Like, I'm in no way a ghost hunter or anything, but yep. I've had some weird things happen to me. But again, I try to look at it scientifically. Like, yep. what, what is it? But, um, but I don't know why. Just because we can't find them, why do they have to be paranormal? I don't know. But I'm not, I am definitely no expert and I don't claim to be, so I don't know. Yeah, LJ, I have no idea this clicking only started when we went live. Correct, Chris? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right, and I, we, <laughs> we, we were talking probably about 15 minutes before the show and none of this clicking is going on. So I'm not quite sure what's going on with the show. Well, with the... The, the paranormal squatch, though, I mean, some people, you know, they talk about that, and that is a theory, and that's fine. Uh, everybody's got their own theory. Uh, some people might have the theory about an alien Sasquatch, and that's fine, you know, but uh, I, I don't condone those theories. I don't, I don't, my theory is different. It's biological, you know, so I'll be kind of like pushing over towards that, the biological rather than the, the paranormal, you know, or, or the supernatural. Me too. Me too. It's just where my focus is and it's where my interest is. And mm -hmm. frankly, yeah. if, if Bigfoot were to be proven to be paranormal, I probably wouldn't yeah. do it anymore because I'm not really, that's not my thing. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. You know, a I'm lot of witnesses, that, will, but it wouldn't be my thing. A lot of witnesses will say something that it's like supernatural or, you know, or, or paranormal. Like it was there and then I, I turned and then it was gone. Like it disappeared. And, um, you know, well, that's it's extremely possible for an animal to disappear as soon as you turn your head. You know, <laughs> that's kind of what they do. You know, they're really good at it. And I right. think these these creatures could, you know, be the same way. One of the guys in my Project Zoo book, he mm -hmm. is a um, head gorilla keeper at a one of the zoos in America. Yeah. And at the zoo he used to work at, the curator at that zoo was one of the people that had gone over to the Cross River region in Africa to find the cross river gorillas oh which, cool you know it wasn't until yeah. this century that the westerners caught up with what the natives were always saying that these were real creatures and oh. so he was over there for i believe eight years 
looking for them, trying to find evidence of them. And he did find some evidence. He found nests. He found, you know, where they had been, but couldn't see them, couldn't find them, was out there with natives, you know, living out there in the jungles. And in eight years, he saw them for a total of 10 seconds. And they were gone. They were there and they were gone. But, like, it was enough. So he's like, okay, yeah, they're real and they're here. But he couldn't prove it. They were gone fast, so they kind of disappeared, you know. Right. But so we know those gorillas are real now. Yeah, if he had been out there for a week and didn't see anything, you know, and yeah. came back, he, he might have thought, well, they're not real, you know, yeah. because I, did, I didn't see them. <laughs> yeah, but he Can't. kept going and going. And you think about Peter, like, people like Peter Byrne, who's been doing this his whole life, and he's never right. seen one. So, right. you know, I'm okay with not seeing one. I just, I want yeah. to. I want to. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay with it. Well, you know, and that's what I tell everybody, you know, it's, it's, it's okay to be skeptical and, you know, don't believe it until you actually see one and that's fine. You know, I, I don't have an issue with that. Uh, a lot of people try to talk, talk you into believing yeah. Bigfoot exists. And I, I, I don't think that's really a pertinent issue. Uh, you know, you're not going to convince somebody no. that they're real until they've actually seen one and they can kind of like you know have a discussion with you right. yeah what what did yours look like you know here's, here's what mine looked like right and obviously i believe in it enough to do this right right yeah um, it doesn't bother me a lot of people get mad when people don't believe them you know or you know i've had yeah. people that just think i am the craziest person hey, amy quick yeah. question for you yeah uh you are are you using a phone tonight i am okay can you do uh, a quick favor and see if you have any other apps open up on your phone to close them. Yes. I'm, I'm talking, I'm actually chatting with tech support now. I, I have nothing else running. Uh-uh. Okay. Just. All right. I've Chris, if you have any other browser windows open, shut them down as well. Yeah, have any browsers or anything. Open. Like if you have Facebook open or it's gone. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to explain. Uh, I'm gonna mute out. Yeah, because I normally would use yeah. my uh, laptop, but it broke the other day. <laughs> yeah, I. Looks like it's coming through mine. So, Chris, you can unmute. Okay, it's not me. <laughs> you know, when I first heard it, it sounded like the the, the Yorkies chewing on something over here, which that's a, a a very likely possibility. You know. Little rascals. <laughs> to me, it sounds like static. I don't know. <laughs> huh. Okay, so oh, you can also do clearing the browser cookies and do a computer restart to help. Uh, no, it does. Uh, it sounds like to me this is a transmission issue that happens once we go live, uh, and they're not quite getting that. <laughs> As you know, I, I don't need a computer restart. No, and I said we're not doing that in the middle of the show anyway. <laughs> All right, well, the chat room is hopping. You guys are so smart. I mean, we got some of the greatest conversation that goes on in our chat room. Really, you can write a book from our chat room. Yeah, no, nobody is typing. <laughs> you know, and and when I'm typing, I'm muted. Yeah. I can't see the chat on my phone, so I'm sad because I like Oh, this. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Well, it's cool, though, uh, Amy, because on this format, we can, if you've got it up on a computer screen a monitor, the, the chat is over on the right-hand side, yeah, and it shows it shows everybody, yeah, yeah it, it shows everybody from Facebook and YouTube and, and wherever, you know. Um, I think yeah. every now and then there's one from Twitter. I'm not, let me look. I can't tell. But usually it's Facebook and YouTube. Mm-hmm. Walt, Walt Wadsworth says he saw a black panther in Cambria County back around May. What state is that? Cambria County. Uh, I'm not certain. What Walt? What state is that? Is that Ohio? It might be. It doesn't just doesn't sound familiar to me. Yeah, I mean, me neither. <laughs> Sometimes they had, they uh, name off states in Kentucky that I, uh, Pennsylvania. Oh no, no, wait a minute. Bob says Pennsylvania. Okay. 
I don't, I don't know. Good thing I'm not a geography teacher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't claim to know every city and every That's state, right. you know. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we know the we know the capitals of the state. <laughs> That's right. So funny. But now, Amy, we were getting ready to talk about. Hey, Chris. Uh, yeah, bud. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Sure. In your settings, mm -hmm. check e echo cancellation. Okay. Do I need to go out and come back in? No, just click on your settings button where it says cam mic. Okay. Uh, Did I do the same or it's not me? Echo cancellation. You want me to check it? Yep. Okay. It is checked. Okay. Yeah, Amy, if if you have that little cam mic button there, yeah. because they changed over their audios a bit, and they they've have new, so I'm just... Yeah, it's checked. And okay, let's check it now. Still sounds like somebody's typing. Yes, no, maybe. It's not quite as bad, I think. Knock on wood. Nah, it shouldn't be at all. I still hear it. Yeah. Bob, I... I've seen two Black Panthers in Union County, Ohio. Oh, cool. Bob, I have seen one in Kentucky when I was a kid. Sure did. They're pretty cool. They're not supposed to be here. <laughs> I think I was talking about that the other night. One of our um, scientists in Project Zoo Book got involved because she is a marine biologist. Mm -hmm. And the state that she works in, she was in a car with four wildlife biologists. And they all mm -hmm. saw a cougar and were told right. by the state that they didn't see a cougar. They saw a golden retriever or Labrador retriever or something like right. this. And yeah. they're like, no, we didn't. So it got her wondering what other things were kind of being, um, you know, being hidden or whatever, you know. Because right. she, she finally got one of the government officials to say that if they said there were cougars in that area, they'd have to have a task force. And to have a task force, they'd have to have money. And they don't have any money, so they don't have a task force. So, therefore, there's no cougars in that area. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, there, there were some people that uh, in my local area who had reported seeing a bear cub in the area, and and they I, they had spoken with some wildlife officials, the fish and game people around this area. And yeah. now nah, there's there's not any bears here in this area. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, the guy took a uh, put out a a, a a trail cam and got video of the bear. You know, it's a little bear cub. Mm -hmm. And so he shows them the video and says, well, what's this? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and that that kind of flabbergasted them. They didn't know what to say. Right. But, uh, you know, uh, just because an, an animal is not common in an area, I, I don't think rules out that it can't be there. No, not at all. And, yes, you know. A reason some of the scientists are interested because they're like, hey, we know it was what we saw. Right. What are they keeping under wraps? So right, and there, there's been reports of, of Black Panther sightings, and that's just what people call them. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm certain it's not like a black tiger or anything like that, but it, it's probably like a jaguar that uh, they call them. A, well, a melanistic uh, jaguar or something. Like whatever, but yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, there've been sightings of those here, and uh, I've per personally seen one with my family when I was a kid. And I was like, uh, you know, mom, what is that? You know, is that what she said? That's a black panther. And I said, oh, you know, is it going to get us? I, she said, I don't know. We better get in the car. And we did. And, uh, you know, big cat. But uh, those things kind of stick with you, you know. Yeah. And sure. uh, if you ask them, you know, the wildlife officials will tell you in Kentucky, oh, there, there is no such thing, especially in Kentucky. And, uh, you know, if you ask them, if, are there any cougars here? They'll say, oh, no, no, not. In the, but there are. <laughs> there are. <Yeah. laughs> Eric says he likes this view better. This is different. So, okay. So I think I've, I, I've eliminated. We're not getting as many clicks now. Mm -hmm. Do you agree, Chris? Yeah. Sounds like it. Okay. I'm just double checking because now I'm just trying to isolate the source here. I am very much bigger I'm still, now. I, I'm actually <laughs> still hearing it. <laughs> yeah, a so, little bit. 
I've heard a few clicks. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I, I think I have it down to it's not either one of my computers. It's the Russians. This view makes me look fatter, Steve. I, I can't do nothing much about that. <laughs> and by the way, I didn't try to look all Bigfooty by wearing camo. I just didn't have anything else washed. So there. <laughs> and I and my hair was bad, so I have a hat on. <laughs> That's cool. You know, I don't have to worry about bad hair. Right. It was funny because I was just out at the Texas Bigfoot Conference, and mm -hmm. most of my pictures I have my brown hair in. But right. since during the quarantine, I decided to let my gray go out because I've had gray hair since I was like in my 20s. So, mm -hmm. you know, I have all my silver now. And they're like, well, is that you? And I'm like, it's just from like two months ago. <laughs> oh, <laughs> me. I, I am not, if you know me, I'm not trying to look younger than I am. I'm happy to be who I am in my age. So, well, yeah. that's, that's great. <laughs> Here we are. Oh. Go ahead, Chris. Keep talking. I'm just trying. I'm just playing with you're, some you're things on, on the board. I'm, I can't I'm, help it. I'm trying to work the board here, trying to make this thing work. I'm following Amy, so I'm going from here to there. Here and <laughs> and I mean, what it sounds like to me is that it gets really bad when we do the share screen. I don't know why. Okay. But no, I'm still hearing it. I'm still hearing like somebody's trying to type over me. Okay, Amy, tell us about Project Zoo Book. All right, well, that's my baby. And yeah, it's my group. I, I co, um, I'm the co-leader, I guess you want to say, or co-founder mm -hmm. of it. Um, basically, I love telling the story because it was very exciting to me and still is. But I met a young lady through Facebook who was interested in Bigfooting and going on an expedition. And it ended up that she couldn't um, make it to this expedition but we kind of struck up a little bit of a friendship and she was telling me that she and all of her coworkers are, were interested in the topic mm -hmm. and um, ended up long story short again. I always have long stories. I try to make them shorter. That's fine. I try, but she is, um, she was at the time um, working at a zoo and her coworkers that she had been talking about were all, the zoo keepers in the primate department at that right. zoo. So mm -hmm. they were the ones that took care of the gorillas and chimps and everybody lemurs and all that. Yeah. So I say a zoo, I don't say which zoo um, project zoo book is still kind of under the radar, which is fine with us. None yeah. of us are trying to be, you know, famous or anything from it. We're just collaborating scientists alongside researchers. So the reason I don't say where is because just just because they are interested doesn't mean their zoo boards are interested and yeah. I don't want to get them in trouble. Yeah. So um, it started with, you know, a handful of researchers along. If you want to call us that, I know the term Bigfoot researcher is kind of like, you know, I mean, I look into it. <laughs> you know, I read about it. I look into it. I go out there. Yeah. And, but for lack of a better word, researcher. Um, and these it started with these zoologists well now they um we have several other scientists involved we have anthropologists primatologists the marine biologists like i said um, yeah, but, but you're not complete until people. you get a proctologist and yeah we don't want any proctologists <laughs> <laughs> that's a hell of a job you start at the bottom and you stay there that's right <laughs> bend over and crack a smile <laughs> no room for advancement <laughs> So yeah, we have a lot of ologists and we have a great time. We do a lot of phone conferences and Zoom meetings and we get together as often as we can. Two of the primate people came out to the Olympic project with me and looked at those nests. And I always love to say that when they got back out of the nest area, they were just really excited and astounded because they, they're yeah. not saying for sure what made them again, but it really looked to them like what they're charges make their chimps right. their gorillas and you know they've been over in africa and stuff and seen right. that firsthand so it's it's been really fun you know i'm a english and reading teacher and a writer and an editor i'm not a scientist but i've been learning as much as i possibly can about oh. primates and it's it's just really fun to have these these scientists and people who are way smarter than me be very open-minded to the possibility that is the way to go 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I like that. I, I like to follow that too, Amy. That's very good. We have good. a lot of plans coming up, so we're excited. So yeah. we you do have a question. Got a uh, question down. from Mick here. Uh, it says, Amy, have you ever researched any reports in the Salt Fork State Park area? Yes. Wow. I have several of them. Um, I used to spend a lot more time there than I do now, but um, yeah, like they, they're, that's, you know, always been kind of a hot spot of reports. So, um, you know, it wasn't too long ago that, again, um, David Wickham, who's a friend of mine, where he investigated a report at Salt Fork, that one of the staff members that worked in the, for the park had seen something cross the road and he went and cast a footprint down there. So I think mm. it was just a couple years ago. So I'm not there so much anymore, but yes, I have. You might run, you might run into uh, what, what's his name? Uh, Jeff Patterson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> And, uh, along. You know, see, I, I, I start, I make the proctologist comment and we're going to get to that question, uh, Eric, uh, but we will get to that question in one second, but here's Bob <laughs> who says that's, uh, I love Bob, Bob's a nice guy. <laughs> Corey says, my luck, my proctologist had poor depth perception. <laughs> um, Oh. And then, and then Mick said, "Proctologists stand behind all their patients." <laughs> wow, oh. where is this conversation diluted to? Oh. <laughs> but <laughs> Amy's still falling over there. So, so anyway, the, the question is, Amy, do you believe there's a cover-up with the Sasquatch? Yes, it's the oh. men in black looking for the Bigfoot <laughs> like they are for you. Oh, know, I don't man. know. Like, I used to think it was ridiculous to even say that. I'm so not a conspiracy theorist type girl. But I'm changing my mind a little bit. You know, like, with all the UFO stuff coming out now um, that was hidden for so long, I'm wondering. And then, like, you know, maybe, maybe it doesn't have to be a cover-up, but it could be because of finances and stuff like that and they don't want to deal with it like the the thing with the cougar that i was talking about mm -hmm. yeah. but i have been told that there is somebody in up in in a certain state i have to be careful what i say who worked for a government agency who they claim that this state does indeed know that bigfoot is real but they don't want to put that out to the public because they would, it would be such a headache, you know, they'd have to close down the park systems and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, they're a very um, believable person, you know? So I don't know, like I'm, I'm open to the idea, I guess that it, there's a cover up where I didn't used to be. I, I'm right. always, I admit that I'm kind of a naive, naive person, with that like i think i think people tell the truth most of all but i guess the more i've been into bigfooting the more i don't think that anymore starting to rethink that <laughs> yeah yeah uh, um yeah I, I i tend to agree but i i don't think it's like they just to me it's always been that well we're not going to acknowledge them yeah i think that's that's the big thing i remember talking to uh, uh charles branson who is an oklahoma game warden I said, "Oh yeah, we we yeah. knew they were yeah well, they were out there. We we knew it." And he actually said, "We and it was kind of funny because coming from New York, uh, the correlation he made was awesome." He turned around and said, "You know, uh, they rut, you know, in July, and that that time of year, July." And I was like, "Well, wow, you know, we do notice a, a uptick in activity in July. That's when it starts in New York." And then he made a, a remarkable thing. He says the reason why they do that is that way they're they're young or born by the spring. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? Well, that is pretty, pretty, uh, you know, pretty, uh, pretty spot on. So, yeah. um, uh, and now Bob says I had a friend of mine who was in the army after Mount St. Helen blew, and they did a cleanup work out there. And some of the stories he told me of some of the bodies they recovered, he wasn't allowed to tell me about. 
Um, so, uh, you know, I, I keep hearing these stories about the St. Helens cleanup after the volcano. Uh, yeah. But, but, you know, here's my, my, you know, here's my issue. We don't, we don't, you think somebody would have taken a picture and smuggled it out? I mean, when, when you have Snowden, <laughs> a person like Snowden, right. uh, you know, there, there's like way more top secret stuff coming out. Than, than just Bigfoot. Well, you know, and also, I don't know if anybody noticed it recently, but it's it's maybe <laughs> a, a, two or three weeks ago, they were talking about the victims they had in some of the California files, uh, fires, excuse me, and uh, they uh, they started out with a number like 71, and then they revised it because they said a couple of them were animals. And I don't know if anybody picked up on that. That kind of caught my interest a little bit. But uh, what kind of animals could be mistaken for a human body? Yeah. Well, you know, Bob says they took his camera. And that and that may be so. But, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. I listen to some military stories. And one of the, mm -hmm. one of the great stories was of uh, this gentleman. I forget his, his name escapes me right now. But he was one of the first flyers of the SR-71. And they weren't supposed to take pictures of him. And... He actually got pictures of them, and the colonel knew about it and said, I'll give you 30 seconds to take a picture and get out of here. Um, and they were top secret, above top secret. Now, maybe it's different there. I mean, uh, if they took his camera, they took his camera. But uh, that doesn't all make sense to me either because usually they wouldn't take the camera. They would just take the film. You know, uh, that that's how, uh, you know, they would handle it. They would take the film and just <laughs> destroy it right on spot. Right. So, and that, that's usually the protocol I know from, as you get the film out of camera, you destroy it right there. They can have their camera back. That's their property. But the film, oh, no, you, you know, so I, I don't know. It, to me, it, you know, could it be? Yes, but, it, you know, mm, you know I have the, a little bit you, of doubt. When you think about a cover-up, though, it is plausible because, mm -hmm. you know, if the government did know about them, I mean, what are they going to do? They come out and tell everybody, Yes, we have Sasquatch in our national park. Sasquatch now. does uh, exist. And then what happens is two things. People's going to be going, ah! No, no, no. <laughs> I, 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 I don't think it has, I think it has a lot to do with logging. Yeah. Mm. Uh, especially mm. in, in the PNW. Yes. Um, but I think it also has a, hey, listen, we don't need a bunch of people running around with guns right. coming to the national park trying to cap one. Right. And, you and know, that's the other. They would be an endangered species right away, you would think, until they could prove otherwise. So well, it it's actually, it's actually, and I've looked at the laws and it's actually the reverse. You can kill anything that's not on the books because it's not on the books. Well, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. that's true. But I would, I think that at least scientists would want to try to save it. So they would want people to stay out of there and it would just, I don't know. I don't. I, know. I, I don't think there's a cover up. I think they're just. I'm. Not, I'm. Look, we're looking the other way, and we're not going to discuss it. Yeah. I think that's kind of like the the uh, the the Black Panthers, the mountain lions, and stuff like that. We're we're not going to cover it up. We're just going to look the other way. And if we did recover some bodies, we're not going to talk about it. You know, let let's uh, let's think of. Um, Let's let's think of this. Even if a guy got a picture of a Bigfoot, oh yeah, supposedly it's going to get people are going to tear it apart. Mm -hmm. You know, the proof is in the proof is is, is what's on the table in front of you. Yeah. And one of the things I find really interesting, and I don't know if that's going on with the Olympic project, but with all these nests, are they doing any eDNA? They are. Yes. Oh, okay, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I knew Derek and crew would be on that because yeah. as they were with the Smeha thing. Very good. Yeah, yeah. Very good. So. Um, so, uh, <laughs> Walt, the MIB will pay you a visit. <laughs> of course, if anybody, uh, if anybody's ever seen uh, any of my videos, I put a video out of Walt and Walt Jr. with the, uh, neuralizer at the, uh, Pennsylvania Bigfoot camping. Remember that was where, uh, they grabbed Bigfoot. Right. <laughs> that was, that was quite funny. Um, so, got, uh, Corey's got a general question. Okay. Do, do you think the advent of cell phones has killed the Bigfoot phenomenon? Who doesn't have a cell phone with a camera in their hand? Well, I'll tell you what. I have a story about that. I was out in the Alleghenies, and I was driving this elk scenic drive. And I had my cell phone with me 
everywhere because I take a lot of pictures. And I was at a scenic overlook and I heard something. I, I had just taken some pictures, put my cell phone back in my pocket and I heard something. So from out of the woods comes this very large black bear. I mean, it probably seemed larger than it was, but <laughs> it wasn't the largest I've ever seen, but it was a large black bear. And she came out of the woods and toward me. So she was about at her closest. It was in front of me. I'd say like five feet, maybe. So very close, wow. you know, doing the sniffing thing. And, and the last thing I thought about was reaching for my camera <laughs> to take a picture of her, you know? And then once she went past me and, was going that way I waited till she rounded the corner and I went the other way and I still didn't think about taking a picture I just wanted to get out of there so it yeah. doesn't really I you know and then another example is I went to a um an event for a Bigfoot movie that was made and I pull into my parking spot and there was a guy in a Bigfoot suit that was running around and I'm like that's funny I'm gonna take a picture so I go to get my phone and I go back to get his picture and he's gone so it doesn't, I can't even take a fake Bigfoot picture. So, That's pretty realistic. I, know, but I feel like that doesn't bother me so much, yeah. you know. Yeah. Like I said, you know, I, I work with these people who are, we're looking for for gorillas that we know are real, and they couldn't get pictures of them, you know. Yeah. So it doesn't really bother me. Steve, I feel so bad right now, but my phone just said it's about to go out, and I don't know why, but. Can run and get my plug and I'll be right back. It's another, oh, sure, another sure. wrinkle of the show. I don't want to yeah. wait till it goes out. Sure, no problem at all. I'm, what I'll do is I'll I'm just gonna put you backstage till I see you come back. All right. So anyway, there, there's a no Steve, that's okay. Steve, that, that that's the last of problems. Yes, Chris. I'm out of ski, so I'm gonna have to be out. I'll be right back. <laughs> no. I'm gonna go back. Look at that. I'm gonna go back to the cloaking gas. No, listen. I'm still on the. I'm still. I'm still on the line here. I just. I, I yeah. shut the, shut off the camera while I grab a ski out of the really, refrigerator. Really, well, well, well. Free can play at that game here, right? Yeah. Okay. Now we have nobody on the show. <laughs> we're we're all cloaked. <laughs> um, no, but the uh, the uh, oh, interesting man. thing, and I got to keep an eye for uh, on the mm. on the screen. The interesting thing about uh, all this is. Uh, with cameras, number one, cell phones don't take great pictures in the woods unless yeah. you have time. Yeah. Uh, you have that psychological. I mean, I I had you got your ski. The following message is brought to you by Ski. Um, but uh, and, and you're right. We can see we can see footage of grills any given days. But the problem is, is that when somebody sees a bigfoot, they're like, ugh. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, you know it, it's and there's a term for that. Um, that's why there is a delay a lot of times. Like like you're in a in a uh, you know a a bank robbery situation or any type of situation where something is happening, it takes that delay for you to realize your options. Um, you were in that flight or fight type of scenario. Um, and Amy, if you're listening, just give me a thumbs up when you're ready to come back on. Uh, yeah, it's called buck fever. Um, yeah, you know, there is a, uh, and, and also that all accounts for some of the paranormal stuff too. Well, I, I saw it, but it just blanked out because your mind has a way of protecting itself sometimes too, in those particular well, cases. But yeah, but you know, why do we, maybe there have been a lot of pictures of it because there's been times we've gotten blob squatches from people that said they've seen it, but they look like a blob squatch. And then he says they, they dismiss it as not being a picture or being a hoax or anything like that. Yeah. It, when, when in the real case, when in the real case, he's back and let me unmute her. Uh, it didn't work. There we go. Okay. That. Yeah, that was you muted. Okay. <laughs> I figured it was better to do it before it went all the way out. Yeah. Right. It's you have because your brain understand how things are interpreted with the eyes. Uh, you know the uh, the eyes don't. It's we use these for your eyes is what the brain is interpreting them as. So when somebody sees something, 
it, and they don't recognize it. it. That's what causes that delay because they're trying to, the, the, the brain is trying to get a, a handle on it. Um, it it's kind of like seeing the moose running in front of the road and you're like, what the heck? You know, think about the time you may see a lot of elk and all of a sudden you see a moose. Like, well, that was an elk. No, it's a moose. Um, uh, well, people actively, if they make the claim, not pictures. I, again, I, I've had a sighting. I had, even though it probably would have just captured darkness, I had a, a, a video camera in my pocket. Uh, I think my cell phone was in my car because there's no cell coverage up and you know the area. I didn't even think about that. And I've been doing it for how many years? Um, didn't even think about, let me, let me get it. Let me get a camera and take a picture. Mm -mm. Um, moment. It's yeah. Kind of like when you have a kid, you know, when my daughter was little, I missed some of her um, dance recital videos because I was watching it, you know, like you're excited about. Here's my cat. This is Macaroni. Oh, macaroni. <laughs> boy cat? Yeah. He's a very handsome devil. Yes, he is. He's a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and and you get that 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 momentary paralysis and i put my and i just froze and i and i knew if i moved my light off that subject or i shook my light or i made any kind of, of big moves it was going to take off and as soon as i did this with the light it took off yeah so i i really think that you know it, it's tough you only get a few seconds shot and like I said, there's been a lot of times people have claimed the scene of Bigfoot, grabbed the camera or whatever they had real quick, took a picture of it. it comes out as a blob squatch because digital photography isn't, you know, you have autofocus on these cameras. You pull it real fast, it's going to focus on the nearest thing to you. The behind it's going to be blurry. You know, so I, I, I really think that's, that's what's going on in a lot of the cases. And that's provided that all the pictures that we've seen are actually in our possession. There may be somebody somewhere. It's got a nice, clear shot, but I ain't showing anybody because they're just going to call me a hoaxer. Right. I wouldn't. Yeah. I would. So maybe I do have some. Yeah. Um, and, and I can tell you, too, they don't focus great. You know, I, I tell the story all the time. You know, you're in the car doing a surveillance and the windshield wiper is going by. As soon as those wipers go by, out of focus. Come by, in focus. Right. Rain hits there, oh, the focus is on the drop. So, you know, <clears throat> in, in a rainstorm, it's it's impossible to use video cameras with inside a vehicle. Yeah. Uh, because of, the, so. Uh, and, and Bob says, Bigfoot uh, research is like deer hunting if you truly think about it. Well, it isn't, it isn't. Because if I'm somebody going out there looking for a deer, a deer we've seen hundreds of times. We know about them. We know. But even as a, as a researcher, you know, now you're seeing, you're like, oh, you know, you're, you're just completely stunned. Mm -hmm. At least I was. So. Yeah, I think maybe uh, when Bob said something about it's like uh, buck fever. Maybe if you're if you're taking a picture, it might seem like buck fever. But I think when you see a, a, a Sasquatch uh, in person, uh, it's more f uh, flight or fight. You know, <laughs> it, it, well, because for your, yeah, you know, I I had been you know uh, up fairly close to some that I had witnessed, and I had to like you know physically tell myself don't run away. You know, my feet wanted to move so bad. But uh, I, I, you know, I had to tell myself keep those feet planted. You know, right. take a look around. You know, and of course, uh, well, the way I did it, I, I just kind of like looked around everywhere except at the, the creature. And then I would glimpse at it, and then look over here, like I didn't see anything. You know. Yep. And here, here's another great example. Mm. Uh, 2007, 2006. I was in Tishnos Post, Arizona, mm. and uh, somebody had seen something. Uh, because off in the distance, because you know, a lot of scrub brush, but off in the distance, it was a street lamp kind of elevated a bit, and something had blocked that light for a second, like something had moved across that plane. Yep. And um, I didn't see it, but somebody sitting in the campsite did. They said, I think you better get the night vision. So I went around that the, to the truck to get the night vision, and something moved about 12 feet behind me. Mm. Now, I didn't think about turning around with the night vision, <laughs> I didn't think about pulling the camera out. I pulled my knife. I didn't have my mace on. I pulled my knife and I spun around like if this thing's because all I heard was this brush moving. 
and, right. and, and I pulled my knife out. I didn't know if it was running at me or away from me. Right. You know, okay. I, I, I got nowhere to run. It's fight. Right. Out of come. And it, it actually ran away and it actually knocked down a fence line about 50 yards away. That wasn't down in the daytime because we've been all in and out of that area. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, uh, you know, again, um, uh, the mind does funny things and you're in the dark and, you know, even in night vision, you know, think about it. if you're wearing a night scope, which I used to do uh, quite a bit, you're only looking like this. So something, you hear something over there and you're going to see something, you're going to be like, right. You know, it, it, it definitely, but now I have a pair of night vision that records. And uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to put that in the plane at spring. And then maybe there, even which left there, this. There are different types of people too. I mean, you have some people that will walk up on something that is un, you know, unnatural for them to see, and they'll go, "Ooh." <laughs> and then you have some people that walk up on that, and they're like, "Ah," you know, they're, and they're you know, make run. And um, I, maybe I'm one of the ones that would run, but you know, I have to, <laughs> I have to tell myself, "Stop, stay yep. right there," you know. So uh, here's the uh, interesting uh, thing. I, you know, I, I kept saying, oh, I can't wait for the fall. I can't wait for the fall. Well, uh, and the reason why we didn't have a show a couple of weeks ago was, and Chris knows this, I have three herniated discs in my back. And they're my upper back, not my lower back. So um, it's getting a little better. They're getting better. <laughs> But uh, it was, I, I pretty much lost the use of my left arm to do anything uh, constructive, including putting my coat on. Uh, or, uh, yeah, I had extreme pain to put my coat on, extreme pain to even tuck in my shirt or anything like that. You know, any kind of certain movements would really jar it. Uh, so that's why I've been kind of out for the count for a little bit for the last uh, few weeks. Um, uh, so that's that. Of course, we get better soon. <laughs> well, well, you know when I did my presentation back in 2019. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you hear the story of that one? Yeah, I remember. That. Yeah, I was doing it with two broken ribs right. that I had broke that morning. <laughs> you trooper. <sighs> so, but this, this, believe it or not, hurts about 40 times worse than the broken ribs because it literally will render my arm from shoulder to fingertip. Like, like somebody, um, you ever take a bat or something, hit it, and you feel that vibration in your hands where it makes your hands go. Yeah. That's what's going on in the shoulder. Yeah. And uh, and the, the bad thing is, is there's good and bad. Good thing is I can, you know, if I hit the weight, it kind of nullifies the pain the next day. Like things start to shift and get back into place. Mm -hmm. But then the problem is the morning after, or a couple of mornings later, I'll stretch. Automatically, you know, you get up in the morning, you stretch, you don't even realize you're doing it. Yeah. And every morning for the last two days, I've stretched and like went into a complete, like, oh, you know, on, on a scale of one to 10, it's about a 40. <laughs> That's how bad it is. And I'm pretty good with pain. So, but, you know, people say, you know, they try not to do surgery on herniated discs and hope, you know, especially somebody in a good shape, right. um, uh, in good shape, you know. And luckily, you know, and, and Corey says he had to basically retire from squatting because his lower back. My, luckily, my, my herniated discs are not in my lumbar. They're all in my shoulder blades. My last cervical one and my first two thoracic vertebrae. So... Yeah, it makes the neck roll and a little painful. Well, makes my show. But that's the problem. If you're not really good and healthy, uh, you know, the thought of going out a minimum of six miles trekking through wilderness and usually probably 12 or 14 a day yeah. is not really possible. Yeah. <laughs> and then carrying that heavy pack. And it's yeah. Like, yeah. The first right. time I did it, I was so proud of myself because I've had health issues. You know, I'm a twice cancer survivor and. I've had a lot of health issues and um, lung problems and stuff, and it's hard. <laughs> like, yeah. And even when you're really healthy, it's hard. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and, and I've never had really much knock me down. The broken rib did. Uh, broken ribs afterwards knocked me down because I was going to the gym pretty regularly, and that killed it for like three, four months. Mm -hmm. 
Ken then, says medical advice and Bigfoot. That's right. And then, <laughs> then COVID, you know, took my gym work away because the gym is just recently opened like a month ago. So, and I haven't been ah. back because I've been dealing with this. <laughs> like, oh. I hope you so, get, yeah, and guess well, what? That clicking is back again. Oh, crap. So, well, the, last few, the last few years I've been falling apart, Steve, but I turned over all my information on my areas to another researcher here locally so we got we got them taken care of if anything happens in those areas they, they'll know yeah i have no idea why this line is clicking like that uh oh it got bad and had nothing to do with either of the computers i think it's just a bad a bad stream tonight maybe yeah so Uh, Cindy's in quarantine. Why are you sick? How hopefully you're not sick. Um, you know, in New York, and then again in New York State, uh, you know, uh, if you come in from Ohio or anywhere, they want you to quarantine. Yeah, I was just out in Texas, so I'm self quarantining so that I yeah. can't see my mom again and stuff for a couple weeks. So, so far, so good. Yep. And and that's true. This could be a this also could be a pinched nerve too. So because it's kind of funny uh, how as B says that she's dealing with a, 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 a pinched nerve. Truthfully, I didn't do anything, lift anything to do this. I woke up like this one morning. I got up and went, oh. So could it be? Could I have laid on my my arm incorrectly or something during the night that caused it? Absolutely. Yeah. So, you were you were beat in your sleep. Yeah, I was. <laughs> Freaking got to stop dreaming about getting beat up, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Um, so, I guess it is that, you know, we, we've eliminated. I got to say that the issue has got to be with the, the provider. Um, so. So, can I ask a question? Do you think Bigfoot yeah, leaves the, the fire areas? I would think so, just like any other animal, you know, they'd get away from it. Um, yeah. We would, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I we so. wouldn't. Uh, all the little critters do, too. I mean, a deer don't say, oh, I'm going to stand here. They're going to take off the other way, too. Um, yeah. I, somebody also asked a question about... Um, <laughs> somebody asked a question about... Uh, Mick, <laughs> he's six foot six, three hundred five pounds, and half sciatica. You're pouring out Rami with ease. <laughs> Sorry about um, that. Jerry made a comment that says there's a movie proposes that Sasquatch uh, co is the COVID nineteen carrier. Yeah, you know, I did think I saw that too, but um, uh, people ask all the time, what do you think if there's an effect on the Sasquatch and COVID nineteen? I don't know. Well, that kind of goes back to the man who killed Hitler and the Bigfoot. Yeah. Oh, does that? Is that what he proposed that they? I, 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 the the reason he went to kill the Bigfoot in that movie, and I have watched it, yep. uh, is because it was some sort of carrier of uh, a plague. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. And uh, the zoos, uh, they have to be very careful about being around the gorillas and chimps and stuff with different yeah. diseases. So why not? Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I it'd be very easy to cross over from humans to them, you know. I, the and from, uh, well, likewise from the, them to us. Yep. Uh, Jeremy uh, just gave a little medical advice: take zinc, magnesium, vitamin D, which I all do, and periodically sleep on my stomach. I have been a stomach. I was a stomach sleeper, <laughs> and I woke up the next morning like, oh. So it, now I am forced kind of to sleep on my back because I can't put any wait for any length of time on the shoulder because right. uh, it starts to ache after a while. Um, <laughs> Bob said that's the worst movie Sam Elliott ever did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One would think. I mean, well, I, you know. I don't know. I must be struggling for a script nowadays. Yeah. Um, uh, and then <laughs> no, I'm I not like, going for surgery. There's no I surgery. Like, at this point. I like Sam Elliott. He's a good actor. Yeah. I thought I could get him on the, come on the show about the movie, you know, but I contacted his agent and never heard from him. 
that costs uh, money, Chris. They don't do it's nothing. Like, for- they're like Helen Hunt, you know. Uh, they're, they're agents. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so not, didn't hear anything from him. But I'll tell you, I actually met him in Glasgow one time. That's why I thought he would do it. But he probably never even got the message to, to come yeah. on the show. But that's okay. Yeah. So, uh, so Amy, what, what's your future plans? What you got going on? Right now, I've been working on my book. Um, I am hoping to finish it up. Um, I'll tell you guys about it. I'm sure nobody's heard about it but me. But um, I am writing a book about Tom Page, who is, was a financial backer for Roger Patterson and later Peter Byrne back in the day before Roger died. He had taken over pretty much what um, from Tom Slick after Tom Slick passed away and he's from Ohio and it took me two years to track him down but I had met him briefly one time and then I had heard you know that he was the money behind all of this stuff and in my head I'm thinking you know I bet he has some stories and I bet he knows more than people think that he knows, you know, or, or did more than people were saying. So I finally found him and unfortunately he passed away early this year oh. and I'm still kind of getting over that because um, after I found him, we spent a couple years where I would get together with him for lunch. Sometimes my mom would come along and right. he would tell me all of his stories. So we were oh. working on a book together. I have a lot of recordings. I have a lot of Um, a lot of notes and things that we did, some things that he wrote himself. And uh, now I just kind of have to finish putting it together. And it's a little bit difficult with him gone because he Uh, was 91, I believe, when he passed away, but still sharp as a tack. A little bit hard hearing, but very smart and um, just gave me a lot of good information. And, And I was right. He wasn't just the money. He went on a lot of adventures with those guys. So he gave me a lot of, a lot of stories to tell with his blessing. I met his family, you know, and um, got their blessing as well. And I'm excited to give this to people who are interested in the history of Bigfoot. So I just need, that's what I've been focusing on that and, and some things that we have coming up with zoo book, but keeping myself busy. And my first love is being out in the woods. I've been taking bushcraft classes at the Midwest Native Skills Institute because I was not, I've always liked to be in the woods, but with other people doing the, you know, uh, fire building and and all of that, I didn't know much. So now I can do it as, you know, that's good with the rest of them, but learn, you know, refining those skills and that's my first love, but um, on the, uh, in all my spare time, you know, I've been writing and I've been um, working with my zoo book project cool. and traveling. <clears throat> well, please hey. let us know when this book comes out. I want to read yeah. this. Yep. It absolutely. sounds interesting. Yeah. I will. He was a fascinating man. He was a big game hunter who was really interested in the Yeti and he yeah. um, finagled his way over to some expeditions over in Nepal. And then when he saw the Patterson Gimlin film and realized that, you know, we might have something here in the U S right. he, wanted in on it and he found a way to get in on it oh that's gonna be cool (laughs) yeah the great great man who a lot of people haven't heard about so i was that when i first contacted him i called him and i said you know mr page my name's amy we met briefly don't expect you to remember me but i would love to just hear your stories that's all i'm after and he was so thrilled to have somebody to tell them to so right yeah it was really neat well, I think it's real important, you know, that his story is written down and, you know, yeah. you, you, you pass that on. And now, uh, you know, Tom Slick has become, you know, like a household name in the Bigfoot world. Right. Right. So why not? Why not Mr. Page? You know, right. he was right there, too. He was. He was. And he has things that I've never heard. And I always say, you know, other people might know these stories and I've read everything I can. You know, once I started right. into this, I, that's what I did. I read things and read things. Right. Right. <laughs> But, Robin, uh, yeah. Robin asked in the chat, uh, "What about questioning Bob Gimlin?" But I think <clears throat> if uh, if Mr. Page got involved after the Patterson Gimlin film, yes. yeah, he wasn't. Really- yeah, by by he that time, been, but yeah, no. 
Yeah, because I, I know it wasn't. It was very shortly thereafter that that Bob and Roger got on bad terms. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Roger, I, well, I feel like Roger, I've gotten to know Roger better through Tom's stories, and um, and you know, Steve, you and I have talked about this. Yes. And I privately, really, yeah. I can't really say a lot because I have an attorney involved right now. Yeah. But um, Mr. Page had had bequeathed me um some videos that he had and i'm he never really exactly told me what he wanted me to do with them and i am 100 not out to make any kind of money from this i just think that people again who are interested in the history of bigfoot need to see some of these things and some of them are copyrighted from back then and i don't know what my rights are as far as like putting them out on youtube or how to get them distributed but um there's some cool footage of roger patterson in there and i feel you know when he gave this to me and again i talked to his family about it i'm like you know you might you might want some of these things and yep. like no it's fine so um i i'm just trying to to do the best i can with what i've been given and try to figure that out so someday hopefully i can share all of that stuff well then you know another thing that'd be interesting i mean uh, after you get all the copyright stuff figured out you could do uh, a video uh, of your book a documentary you know you know what i mean uh that's true. present present that's your book and yeah, yeah that's a <laughs> that would be good step. yeah and it would just be an honor of him i mean he was just such a good and fascinating man and um you know, I, I would just like to honor him with that, whatever I end up doing. You know, he, again, like the word I always use with him, he, he's, he was always tickled to give me stuff or tickled to tell me <laughs> things and stuff. Yeah. And so I just, I wish I had had that conversation. Okay, what do you want me to do with yeah. these? And I never did because I just wasn't expecting yep. him to be gone. Yeah, it, it's, life is, is so precious. I mean, we talked to, um, 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 Ryan Cavalline, who was doing, um, he, he did uh, uh, Mountain Devil 2, The Mystery of Jan Clement. Yeah. And he was talking with, uh, um, wow. I, I had his name now. I left it at you know, my train wreck of thought. But, um, <laughs> you need to go plug your stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, the man who, who uh, basically published the book, um, and he passed away before the film came out. And, uh, you know, we, life is precious, man. We never know who, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm friends with, um, JC Johnson's daughter on Facebook yeah, yeah. and she put out this beautiful video of her as a baby with J a young JC running around and JC was loved. We didn't agree on, on, a, on some stuff, but you know, just the, his method of story, he had that voice. Yeah, Miss Stacy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we, you know, he's one of the big, big losses that that we we've had, and we we uh, who else did we lose just recently? Um, oh, it, it's just you know, you, it, there's so many now. It, it's just, uh, but that's what happens when we get this age. And I never. It, the funny thing is, is you know, when we're young, we hear our parents talking about that, going, "Oh, you know, yeah. I remember, you know, you know." Billy Bob and he was really a great guy and and yeah he, and, and then now we're that age going right. holy shit I understand what they were going well, through and, and I back. Think that kind of is what spurred me to find him I like I felt this uh, urgency I'm like I want to find him yep. and and I've been um, talking to Robert Morgan you know he's over in near the Pittsburgh area now mm -hmm. and um just getting stories from oh Robert W Morgan's over in Pittsburgh yeah, now. He's over, so before COVID, we had been getting together quite a bit, and and I uh, miss him. So we communicate as well, much next, as possible through emails. And next uh, time there's a PA Bigfoot camping adventure, which I yes, hear there's going to be one him. in a couple he's years. He's great, and his manager Jeff Steven is awesome. Gotta and so him, just huh? I just I love the history of this. All. You know, whether or not Bigfoot is real, this is a fascinating story. You know, just of all of these people that have been caught up in what they've done with it and everything. So I, um, you know, I just, and Ohio's own Don Keating, you know, he's not an old timer. If you're watching Don, <laughs> <laughs> but you're kind of a legend, you know, so 
Um, oh, he he's an old timer. <laughs> no, you're just not. Just kidding, Don. <laughs> they don't want him to put a hit out but, on me. You know, just getting to know these people. Do Donald, been doing this way before I have has been an honor and a pleasure. Now you get mad. If Don gets mad at you now, it'll rain over your house for like 20 days. Yeah. He's doing the weather gig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, Bob uh, shot a message that he, he thinks you'd be great writing a children's book about you know, I thought about it you know I, as a teacher um, <laughs> I've thought about it but I I especially for little kids I I don't know well I am a writer before I became a teacher I was a technical writer I write installation manuals for bank machinery and the Hope Diamond at the Smithsonian. I got to help write the, uh, nice. you know, all the safety things for that. But um, I also have always written fiction and nonfiction. And so finally I'm, you know, getting to the book that I've always wanted to write. And it, I just had to have the right topic, but don't, you know, don't count that out. I love children's books. I still yeah. read them myself. So who knows? Yeah. Damn. Well, so that's uh, that's three projects gone. You've got the book, and then once you get the book done, you need to do the movie, and then <laughs> then then you need to do the children's book. Then you need to do the biography of yourself. You're going to be actually, busy. I'm writing, yeah. I am working on a screenplay too. <laughs> no, there you go. Bob says, "Don't let her kid kid you. She's great with kids." Ah, thanks, Bob. I love kids. <laughs> I miss my job so. We'll see what happens. I, I love kids too, as long as they're not grandkids. <laughs> Give them back. Here you go. Here, take right. it. Yeah. Yeah. Change his diaper. <laughs> oh, he's a bit cranky. Here you go. <laughs> yep. God, what, how many grandkids am I up to now? Really? You have grandkids? Lots of grandkids? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Wow. Congratulations. That's Thank fun. You. I don't have any that I know of yet. <laughs> I have one daughter. Yeah, I'm 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 waiting for number six to come along. <laughs> I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> That's exciting. Uh, nah, I, I think we're gonna I think five we're gonna mellow out a little bit. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? But uh yeah, so I you know, and, and you know, kids are wonderful things, you know. My oldest far stranger, New York State. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, so I may have an inside line. Yeah. Hey, Dad, I'm you'll never to talk to her on Project Zoo Book. We just hmm? met a forest ranger out in Texas, yeah. which is yeah. really why I do this because you know I've, yeah. I've been speaking some different places: Gatlinburg, um, Texas, uh, Creature Weekend in Ohio, out west. But I do it to try to get <laughs> try to get scientists involved. <laughs> I just saw that. Yeah. You know? I love when I also love when I go home. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, nah, I, 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 I love my kid. I, I love everybody. It's just, it's just so much fun being around them, you know, but I, I live about an hour from all of them. So, well, you know, funny. I don't see them as much as, you know, I, I like to, but, you know, um, but, and, uh, you know, my son was into squatching for quite a bit, for quite a while. You, you know, you look at some pictures back in, uh, you know, about four, five, seven years ago, you'll see him out there in the field with me. But, you know, then he went to school for fish and wildlife management. And, you know, now he's a far stranger. So I doubt he even wants to be seen with me now. <laughs> oh, my old man. Oh, golly. He hunts Bigfoot, you know. No, I, I think the rangers are cool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the, 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 the rangers are probably cool with it. The NCON guy is probably like, <laughs> yeah. kind of guys you're, are cranky. It's weird where you'll meet people. Like I I have learned that you just need to kind of put yourself out there. I met Malcolm McDowell in you know Malcolm McDowell, uh -huh. the, uh, oh, the yeah. actor. Yeah, I met him in a John. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting there, and he comes walking in, takes the next one next to me. Yeah, how's it going? Hi. Funny, that is hilarious. I love it. Uh, it was fun. I was like, oh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, Kevin Graveau, um, he played uh, the big lichen in the uh, underworld movies, the big, oh. huge lichen Drax. I'm gonna have to watch one of those. Again. Um, yeah, he, I, I, I met him at Scarefest, he was standing there waiting at my table after my presentation. 
like I'm walking out, and everybody's like, like a couple of my my handlers that I bring with me, like, hey, hey, you gotta check. You gotta get back to your. So I come there, and all of a sudden I hear this voice. Uh, I've been, you know, I be, hey, I've been waiting for you. He's got this real deep voice, and and uh, just an amazing, amazing, great guy. Oh, that's cool. And uh, the the funniest story I ever have though is I went. I had a lane when I was bowling when I was a teenager. And who shows up to bowl in the lane next to me? Def Leppard. No. Yep. Did they have the bandanas on? I, I used to have a Def Leppard. No, they, 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 were all, they were all Brits. They were opening for Aerosmith the next day at the Palace Theater in Albany. And they all come in. And this is pre-accident before he yeah. was. Yes. And they were all tanked and obnoxious. But they were friendly, and they 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 were cool. They're like, hey, you ought to come out and see our show, you know. And I, so that's fun. Yeah, that that that's was fun. And and I was like, hey, you know who that was? <laughs> Holy, that was Def Leppard. I met um, Gene at the airport one time. Oh, uh, Gene Simmons. Martin Sheen. Oh, Martin Sheen. No, Gene Simmons would have been more exciting. <laughs> I, I I was at O'Hare Airport and I saw Stevie Wonder. No, no, no lie. He did not see me though. But I did see Stevie Wonder. No lie. He's about six foot four. He's a big dude. But uh, yeah, I, I didn't know that. Really? Yeah, he's he's like whoa, he's huh. a big guy, six two, six four, somewhere in there. He was like, huh. but, cool. yeah. The last time when I just took my Uber to go to the Cleveland airport, there was a Cleveland Browns player. From the like '90s, that was my Uber driver. Don't you? <laughs> Nothing I like know. retiring to Uber. You just never know. <laughs> That's got to be pretty bad if you were an NFL player and now you're an Uber driver. Like on the side, you know. So I don't know, but <laughs> that would be kind of funny, though. You know, yeah. celebrity Uber. Hey, there's an idea for a great TV show. It was really fun. I was like, oh my gosh. So, oh, somebody asked. I didn't even catch that. Somebody said something about Gandalf. And no, that's Ian McKellen, not McDowell. Steve met Gandalf in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, oh. we could. We better leave it there. <laughs> that's that's hysterical. Oh, that's pretty funny. No, Malcolm McDowell was uh, Clockwork Orange. Uh, he was also the bad guy in the old movie Blue Thunder, where Roy Shatter was the helicopter pilot and Malcolm McDowell was his adversary in that. He plays uh, a good villain. He really does. He does. He was the in Star Trek Generations. He was the villain as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're welcome, That's, Chris. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah that was a good one. So my, my cinematic knowledge is... <laughs> Bob, I peed on Bruce Dickinson, the least. What? <laughs> you know what? I want to get Bob on the show someday just oh, to tell that Bob. story. Bob's awesome. He's been out to my Creek event. That's another thing I do, Chris, but it's been canceled this year. But we have a big event in Ohio for area researchers. It's kind of like a big Bigfoot family reunion. It's really fun. And Bob came to the last yeah. one. He's a oh. <laughs> that would be cool. It's People really, are going like to have to let me on the DL. Campfires and fun. It's nothing too serious. No speakers or anything like that. Just fun. Yeah. Oh, and, and leave it to leave it to Cameron to show up late. Well, better late than never, Cam. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, what a heck of a show we've had. Uh, we got about uh, a few minutes left here, so we're gonna we're gonna wrap here. Um, but man, it's been a lot of fun despite this clicking noise. Which I've taken all the computer, all of my computers offline, and it's still been going on. So, like right now, my <laughs> the uh, the share screen is even off, and I have one account pulled out. So I, I have no idea. Oh, Steve, I was supposed to tell you I forgot. I it's going to be cryptic because I can't say much about it. But there's a new and exciting event coming up in Ohio next year. I'm not in charge of it or anything, but. Um, There'll be more information coming soon. Okay. Good event. Oh, yeah. cool. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to get the deal on that. And... Yes, you will. All right. Cool. I was asked to say that. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be good. It's going to be good. All right. 
Count that me sounds in. Sounds great. Count me in. I'm wanting to do Ohio for a little bit. Ohio is not that far away. I think I could make Ohio a really good. Yeah, you should come. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to see Lester before she leaves. I don't know. Oh, he's downstairs sleeping. I can hear him snoring in the distance. Mm. That's what we hear. It's snoring. <laughs> <laughs> And what it is, uh, and what it is, oh, that's the, that, that's the lights no. on the, the ceiling below you. The mystery is oh. solved. <laughs> but hey, if anybody, if there are any scientists or people out there that want to get in touch with me, it's really easy because my Gmail is bigfootamy at gmail dot com. <laughs> Bigfoot A M O I. Very good. And, and and Amy, if you ever have any doubts on any kind of cases or anything like that, just give me a holler. I'm really, I I, I I've started this kind of new thing. I've been looking at the a, a basically a forensic analysis of a story. Okay. And that's that's how I got the Bigfoot peeper case yeah. was that 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 the story made no sense on, on how it went it was that the, he he had a phone. Oh, luckily he had a camera nearby. He's cameraing. Then his wife walks in the room. Well. Why wouldn't you tell your wife first thing? Right. And then his wife sees it, panics, runs out of the room, then he grabs his gun. Oh. Like, why would you grab your gun after you've been filming this thing for 10 minutes? Yeah. You know, so forensic, the, 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 another thing too is kids' videos. You see these videos out, and then this is another psychological thing. And you see these kids' videos, you know, where you know, a man and his little son was out there, and oh, oh, there's Bigfoot. No, if you're going to see this unknown cryptid for the first time, you're, you're going to protect your child. You're not going to go, oh, look, there it is. Here. Well, let's get out of here. No, let's get out of here. No, because there was one time I had my daughter. She was a little older, and my ex-husband was there, too, to be fair. But we were walking down these railroad tracks where there had supposedly been a sighting, and I heard something, and I, like, ran the <laughs> <laughs> This was like the like when I first started doing this. I like booked it down the railroad tracks, and she's like, "Mom, I'm still." <laughs> <laughs> we uh, yeah. So anyway, we, we got but, you know, it's a one quick question: Have you read *The Apes Among Us* by John Green? Yes, absolutely. Okay. have. Okay. Sometimes that was one of the first things I read mm -hmm. when I saw whatever it was that I saw. Excellent. So th that answers Robin's question. Okay. So we got to run. It's 1059 and the clicking is going on, clicking, clicking, clicking away. So we're not going to, we're not going to do our normal uh, outro this week either. Like the uh, second week in a row, we haven't been able to do, uh, do an outro, but uh, uh, anyhow. Uh, well, thank you for having me. This was fun. Oh, absolutely. It's always fun. And, you know, we always fun have fun when we talk about, crazy thing to in the Bigfoot world. So yeah. You know, uh, thank you. Thank you for coming on, Amy. We've just been yeah. a pleasure having you. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get the we'll end. have to get you guys on that new book call someday. And yeah. Let us know when that book comes out because I wanna get it. Yep. Good deal. Okay, folks on um, Chris, do your thing. Oh well, again, I want to thank all the all the guests in the chat room uh, for joining us tonight. We got the greatest audience in the Squatch uh, podcast world. <laughs> I want to thank Amy for for uh, being on tonight, and remind everybody that's watching us on YouTube if you hadn't already, please click like and subscribe. Click just like the clicks that are going on now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, ring everybody clicking on the links. Yeah, that's it. That that must be it. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Okay, folks. On behalf of everybody here at Squatch DTV, again, thanks to Amy View for coming on tonight. What a fun night it's been. Great conversation, despite some <laughs> despite some of that noise. Uh, anyhow, uh, we'll be back next Sunday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, for your squatching pleasure. We'll be here, of course, on YouTube com forward slash steve coles facebook.com forward slash steve dot coles and twitter.com forward slash squatch det squatch that so we'll catch everybody next week 9 p.m eastern everybody have a healthy safe week god bless and most of all keep on squatching catch you in a bit okay there we go one Bye.
folks. You've been watching Squatch DTV. Join us each week, Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, for the latest on the Bigfoot mystery. As always, we thank you for being our loyal viewers and encourage all to subscribe to our YouTube page at youtube.com slash Steve Culls. As always, have a great week. Stay safe. God bless. And keep on squatching.